Hi guys, in this video we'll be discussing hormonal interactions in the menstrual cycle as well as interpreting the graphs showing the menstrual cycle. And finally, a summary. Hormones are used to control the stages of the menstrual cycle. These hormones can interact. Some of these hormones include LH or luteinizing hormone, FSH or follicle stimulating hormone, estrogen and progesterone and these are all involved in the menstrual cycle. The levels of these hormones are always changing. This brings about the different stages of the menstrual cycle. They can also interact with each other by promoting or causing the release of other hormones or inhibiting or stopping the release of other hormones. So let's talk about FSH or follicle stimulating hormone. FSH stimulates the ovaries to produce estrogen, another hormone. FSH is produced by the pituitary gland. FSH release then travels in the blood. It then travels to the ovaries where it stimulates it to produce estrogen. Estrogen can also interact with other hormones. Estrogen can inhibit or stop the production of FSH. This prevents more than one egg maturing. This is because FSH causes follicle or egg maturation. Estrogen is produced by the ovaries. This estrogen travels in the blood. It then travels to the pituitary gland where it stops the production of FSH. Estrogen also has another function. It stimulates the pituitary gland to release luteinizing hormone or LH. Again, estrogen is released from the ovaries and travels in the blood. It then stimulates the pituitary glands shown here to release luteinizing hormone or LH. There's another hormone involved in menstruation and this is progesterone. Progesterone inhibits or stops the release of LH. Progesterone is also released from the ovaries and travels in the blood. It then inhibits the release of LH from the pituitary gland. This means the levels of luteinizing hormone or LH also decreases. This means that the levels of LH or luteinizing hormone decreases. In part one of this video, we discuss that hormones control the stages of the menstrual cycle and these hormones interact to do this. Now let's consider all the four hormones involved in the menstrual cycle together with a graph. Now this graph shows the levels of the four hormones over 28 days. The red line stands for FSH levels, the green line stands for LH levels, the pink line stands for estrogen levels, and the blue line stands for progesterone levels. Don't worry if this graph looks really complicated. I'm going to go through the different stages and the different levels of hormones in this video. So this graph is broken down into steps. The first step is that the pituitary gland releases more FSH at the start of the cycle. This causes a follicle, which remember is an egg and its surroundings, to mature in an ovary, and this stimulates the production of estrogen. So in this graph, we can see as the pituitary gland produces more FSH at the start of the cycle, the levels of estrogen increase. And this causes the follicle to mature. Now let's look at the next stage. Well, after this, estrogen causes the lining of the uterus to grow and stimulates the surge of LH or rapid increase in LH from the pituitary gland in the brain. So as estrogen increases, levels of LH also increases. So what happens after this? Well, LH causes the follicle to rupture and release the egg. So the spike in LH causes the follicle to rupture. After this, the LH also stimulates the remains of the follicle to develop into a structure called the corpus luteum. And you can see the egg developing into the corpus luteum here. Now let's look at the next stage of the menstrual cycle. Progesterone is produced by the corpus luteum after ovulation when the egg is released and this maintains the lining of the uterus. So you can see here that levels of progesterone increase. After this, when progesterone levels fall, 
the lining breaks down. So when progesterone levels fall, the lining also breaks down. So as progesterone inhibits the release of LH and FSH, when the levels of progesterone fall, it doesn't inhibit LH and FSH and the cycle starts again. So there's a fall in the level of progesterone, but the levels of LH and FSH increase. Now let's look at the summary again. So this is a graph that shows you the levels of hormones over 28 days of the cycle. And remember at day 14, ovulation occurs. So now let's consider what happens if the egg is fertilized or if the woman becomes pregnant. So what happens is the levels of progesterone will stay high, they won't drop. This means that the lining of the uterus is maintained during pregnancy. So this level of progesterone remains high. Now you know how hormones interact during menstruation. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing GCC biology and combined science resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make biology at GCSE a walk in the park.